Michael Chandler is a former three-time Bellator lightweight champion who now fights in the UFC. His background is in wrestling where he was an NCAA Division I All-American wrestler at the University of Missouri. He owns Training Camp, an MMA gym in Nashville, where he also resides with his wife Bree, who he married in 2014, and their two adopted boys, Hap and Ace. Michael Chandler is also an evangelical Christian. Obviously, I think it's you know widely known I'm a Christian man. Um, follow the teachings of Jesus Christ, his life, his death, his resurrection. Who attends the non-denominational church Crosspoint.tv in Nashville. Here's him talking about the church he belongs to. Hey, how long like have that. you how long have you guys been at Crosspoint, by the way? Has it been a couple of years now or Yeah, so we're we're going we're coming up on three years here in August and we started going to Crosspoint essentially right when we first got here because we we had heard um heard as a phenomenal um phenomenal church and then obviously with the the connection with pastor kevin and the first time that i just heard him speak and, and you and every all the, the rest of the staff there i was just like this is our this is our place and, and we love it and, um but so probably two and a half years or so michael grew up in the roman catholic tradition but admitted that he was just going through the motions and didn't have a personal relationship with god Here's how he described his history and the turning point in his life. I was uh, I was raised Catholic, did my first Holy Communion uh, and my confirmation, as all Catholics do um, as they are kind of growing in their faith. But it really did feel just like a, a routine, something I had to do. I had to go to PSR on Monday nights, I believe it was, public school religion, every week basically um, kind of growing up. and. Uh, but it was just that, it was something that I had to do, not, so, not something that I wanted to do, and not something that really felt like a relationship with an, an entity. It wasn't till, uh, till a guy named Kenny Bowen, who was on my high school wrestling team, invited me to church, and I went to kind of my first um, non-denominational, spirit-filled church there in uh, called Twin Rivers Worship Center in St. Louis, Missouri, that I, first, that I really started seeing these, these young men and young women just have a different relationship with Christ, a different relationship, a deeper relationship. Um, and that's when I really got saved. You know, when I was 15 years old, um, cause before that it was just religion. It was just a, uh, Hey, I have to do this. You know, you're a young kid and you're like, gosh, mom and dad are making me go do this thing. And they're making me go to mass and they're making me go to the Catholic church. And then I started to kind of take, take my, my, my spiritual life into my own hands as a, as a teenager, as a 15 year old, and um, carry that on now into, I'm almost 35 years old. Unlike some other Christian MMA fighters, Chandler doesn't always verbalize his faith on the mic, taking inspiration from the motto by St. Francis of Assisi. And I don't talk about it a ton. You know, I try to live my life by one of my favorite quotes is, uh, preach the gospel at all times and when necessary, use words. But that doesn't mean that his faith is minuscule. Here's him talking with his pastor, speaking about the role that faith plays in his life. You know, it, it fully encompasses who I am, both as a as a man, as a father, as a husband, and also the guy that you see training every day in the gym, the guy that you see performing inside the cage. You know, I, I believe that God put me on this earth, not just to be good, but to be great, not just to be great, but to be extraordinary in a sport that people are drawn to, and it's a metaphor for life, and I know that every ability that I do have and every moment that I, I do have to go out there and perform is just my gift that I'm giving back to God for all the blessings that I've had. He's had me in the palm of his hand and, it, and it's, it's the most humbling experience of my life realizing how God has orchestrated every single interaction, every single relationship, every single closed door, every single open door to have me right in the palm of his hand to get me right to where I am today. As a Christian, Chandler draws strength and direction in life from the Bible, which is God's word. I can't listen to the lies that I've been told. I have to continue to listen to God's truths. And I hear his truth through his word. I tell myself that I was created in the image of an almighty savior, created in the image of an almighty God. It's a constant battle every day to try to stay built up. And the easiest way to stay built up is to stay in God's word. And here's Chandler talking about his favorite Bible passage. Yeah, so my favorite scripture of all time in every season of life is Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. Be anxious for nothing, obviously right now is a crazy time of anxiousness, we don't know what's going on. But be anxious for nothing, but in everything, through prayer and supplication, 
praying and, and seeking God's face with thanksgiving. So also being thankful and also being also being um, uh, full of gratitude. Let your request be known to God. And he's not always going to answer said prayers. Not every door that you want to be open is going to be open. But in due time, what God's will for your life is supposed to be, it will reveal itself. But also realizing that Philippians 4, 6 is also uh, followed by Philippians 4, 7 and 8, which I'm paraphrasing, but says something like, but then and only, but dwell on the positive, dwell on the yeah. things of good reputation, dwell yeah. on the things that are, are of good, good repute, that are wonderful, yeah. that, are, that are awesome, that are great. Dwell on these things and then and only then can the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, be granted yeah. to you. So in order Preach. to not be anxious, in order to not worry about things, we need to have gratitude, we need to pray about them, we need to be thankful for God's blessings, but then we also need to dwell on the good things, the positive yes. things, the, the, the things of good reputation, and then and only then can that peace that you want, that everybody wants, how do we get peace in life? All we want is peace yes. in life. Yes. Then and only then can that be granted to you. Chandler makes it clear that he's not a perfect man, but rests on God's grace to a sinner like him. I am by no means perfect. I'll be the first one to admit that. Um, I have my faults. I have my struggles. I have the things that I that I deal with, that I struggle with, and even my moments of lack of faith, even my mo moments of not operating in the way that uh, that a man of faith would, as far as the confident expectancy of the good things happening. I'm not going to sit here and say that I deserve to be standing on stages and speaking from the pulpit and talking about scripture and talking about my calling and talking about God's grace and all of these different things. I'm not going to sit here and say that because I don't think that God calls the qualified. He qualifies the called. Now, I'm sure there's things I've said that I probably wish I wouldn't have said. That is not indicative of a good Christian man, but maybe I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. Maybe I love Jesus, but I stumble and fall. Maybe I love Jesus, but I'm a little bit violent. Maybe I love Jesus, but I am not perfect. There's this idea that you know I've, i'm managing and handling everything so well but trust me guys i'm working on it every single day i am a sinner saved by grace just like you guys i am a normal human being just like you guys michael doesn't believe that christianity erases hardships or that everything will go perfectly if you follow jesus but he does believe that it transformed life's failures into positive as we all know as Christians, it's it's not all sunshine and rainbows after you give your life to Christ. It's There's going to be tough times. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. But, but through it all, you're one of God's children and you are absolutely blessed. But if we can go from failure to failure or setback to setback without losing the enthusiasm and without losing the faith and the belief that knowing that even if pain comes, even if the anguish comes, even if one door closes that I wanted to, wanted to be open so bad, yeah. God still got you right in the palm of his hand. I always say, if something bad happens to you, but if something good comes out of it, was it really a bad thing? Yeah. Or was it just the perspective that you had at the moment? Because all, all we can do is make the best decision that we can with the information that we currently have. Mm -hmm. And I think trying to make sure we don't put too much pressure on ourselves to figure it out. Yeah. Lean on, lean on God knowing that He's going to come through like he always does right at the right time because yeah. it's not on your timing it's, it's on his timing um but not with the arrogance of well i can be kind of just you know f you know i don't i don't need to to pray about this or i don't need to to, to try to discern this or i don't need to try to seek like wise counsel about this because god will figure it out for me and the wins and the losses are in god's hand at that point you know i'm not gonna not gonna just sit here and and say I don't need to train and I don't don't need to do my diet right and I don't need to do this and don't need to do that right because really the outcome is in God's hands but truthfully I want to leave no stone unturned in my preparation I, I want to do everything right I want to live with conviction train with conviction push myself every single day show up on fight night put my best foot forward try my best try my hardest uh, have a relentless spirit inside the cage and if I win I win if I lose I lose and it's all part of the process so it's I, w I would say that Jesus is on my side but also, even if I lose, Jesus is still on my side. Finally, here's how Chandler desires his legacy to be seen at the end of his life. The moment that I get done with my last fight, whether I win or lose, I get my hand raised or I don't, and you know, I walk back to a, a locker room somewhere, at some big arena, and maybe my face is bloody and I'm sweaty. I gotta go back to shower off, but I look in the mirror first as I'm taking off my gloves, and I gotta ask myself, Michael, did you give everything that you possibly could hmm. with the talents that God gave you? And I want to be able to answer that question truthfully 
and without regret. And I want to be able to paint a masterpiece. Every single decision I'm making, every single performance that I have, every single way that I carry myself, every single um, way that I, that I love my wife and take care of her and cherish her, but I'm painting a masterpiece for my, my son to one day see. And I don't want him to see it through the lens of, of my words and, and how I am portraying it. I want him to be able to have interactions with tons and tons of people that say your dad was X, Y, and Z. And I want that. I want all of those things to be positive. And, and that's just, if anything is possible, it's that we can get to the end of a fight career that we can get to the end of our life. We can get to the end of a, a season and say, I did everything that I possibly could with the talents that God gave me. And I can answer that question. Did you give everything you possibly could? Um, and, and have no regrets. To keep up to date with Michael Chandler, you can follow his career on Instagram at Mike Chandler and the May. And if you know Mike, then there's no other way that we can end this video than him saying, God bless. See you at the top.